Gail, why don't you pull the microphone close to you there? Thank you. Ms. Clark. I'm sorry, I forgot to ask him to state and spell his name. Brian Cato Kalen, B R I A N K A T O K A E L I N. Ms. Clark. Right, Mr. Kalen, is Cato your middle name? A nickname. Is that what people call you instead of Brian? Yes. You a little bit nervous today? I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> a little nervous. All right, Mr. Kalen, did you know someone by the name of Nicole Brown Simpson back in 1992? Yes. Can you tell us, please, how you met her? In Aspen, Colorado. And what was the event? Uh, it was uh, like a Christmas break, and I went with a buddy, and we met. And what uh, month was that, if you recall? December. Who was the buddy you were with that when you met Nicole Brown? Grant Kramer. Did you get involved in some kind of romantic relationship with her? Did I? Did you? No. I, I said, Nicole, I, who lives back there? And she said, no one. And then I said, could I? And she says, well, if you do, you have to clean it out. And I said, great. Was and it not clean at that time? There was uh, furniture in there, uh, um, treadmill, and a few other things. Okay. And that was it. So did you make some agreement with her concerning paying rent, living there? Yes. And what was your agreement? Uh, it'd be 450 to 500 for rent and then take care of the kids. Nicole would take things off. And uh... now during that time, did you have occasion to meet Mr. Simpson? Not in January. I think it was in February. I don't know the exact date. Sometime in February of 1993? Yes. And when I say Mr. Simpson, is that someone you see in court today, sir? Yes, sir, Jay. Point him out, please. There. So. Thank you. Okay. And how was it you met him? What was the occasion? Oh, he came by. To the house on Gretna Green? To the house on Gretna Green. Okay. How long did you live at that house on Gretna Green? until January of 94, the beginning of January. Right there. Why not? I was going to move in, and I moved in at OJ's. Why not? Why'd you do that? Uh, because OJ asked me to go to his house. I mean, it was part of the deal. I went there instead of moved in with Nicole. There's. What did the defendant say to you about moving into his house instead of Nicole's uh, condominium or townhouse? Um, well, I mean, we talked about it, and uh, it was sort of the, like the right thing to do that not to be in the same house, that I should probably go there, and O.J. offered me his place. It was uh, free, and, and he said, when you can stay as long as you want, and when it's time for you to go, he let me know. Okay. Now, so did he um, indicate anything to you with respect to what he thought of the fact that you'd be living in the same house with Nicole Brown? Well, they were trying to work things out, and I said that I understood. It wasn't, uh, I thought, maybe I shouldn't be a guy in the house, and I would go there. <laughs> kind of like that. Did he, thought, did he indicate to you in some way that he thought it was inappropriate for you to be in the same house with her? Or he didn't like it? Well, it not didn't like, but it probably wouldn't be right. And why wouldn't it be right? I, I don't know the answer. Were you lovers? No. Just friends? Friends. Did you tell the defendant that? Oh, he, he knew we were friends. But he still didn't want you living in that house? I, I guess, I mean, I didn't, and uh, I guess not. Okay. And so he offered to let you stay at his uh, house on Rockingham, is that? Yes. Do you recall the address on Rockingham, where he um, lived? At 360 North Rockingham. 
Mm -hmm. And what was your arrangement with the defendant concerning how, what kind of rent you'd be paying him to stay at his place on Rockingham? I, I offered rent and OJ said he didn't want my money and that was it. So he let you stay there for free? Yes. Now, were you an aspiring actor back then, sir? Yes. And you still are? Yes. Did you think it might be advantageous to you to stay with the defendant and get to know him for your acting career? I, I didn't think that. I never asked for anything like that. I was getting rent free, so I didn't, we didn't ask anything. Mm -hmm. Did you think acting. that your friendship with him, your acquaintanceship, especially living on his property, might send acting roles your way? I didn't think that. I just, I never asked. I was hopefully getting things on my own. Mm -hmm. But I, so you, you know, if, if he did, if he, he'd bring it up on his own. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going for the same parts. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> what I'm getting at, sir, is this. You hoped it might help, but you weren't going to ask him for help. Is that right? Uh, I, it could, he could have helped me. I mean, it, if it happened, it could. He was someone that could help me. Yes. Turns to the room. To Those get doors. These doors. This would be my how I'd get in. My bed. So, uh, this is the office. This is a. Dresser, TV. Okay. Now, for the record, when the witness said office, he gestured to the room uh, just behind, just past the bed. When he indicated the front entrance, he indicated shuttered doors. There's a the photograph. And I think the rest is something for us, right? Yes. If you open these shuttered doors and walk straight out, sir, can you tell us what you go to, what area? Okay, there's uh, cement here, three steps that, I think three, that lead up, and you'd walk straight up you kind of hit the pool and left is the main house and right would be the other guest houses with respect to photograph b sir can you tell us what's shown in that photograph the shot would probably was taken like from the office spot area uh, were you uncomfortable living there no it was uh another maid that was saying things Another maid? Yes, before this. That didn't want you living there? She would say things. Do you want to know her name? Yes. Michelle. Did you have some run-in with her? No. She would say, oh, gee, once you out, but I never believe in tell you should, you should go, Cato. I said, okay. And OJ would say, I'll tell you when to go, not Michelle. So she was urging you to leave? Since day one. <laughs> Do you know why? Do I know why? Yeah. She, I don't know. I don't. I think she just wanted the house. Wanted the house? Well, I don't think she wanted someone new there. I don't. My. I mean, I can't. Did she clean? Your, I'm sorry. Did she clean your room? Yes. Sometimes she'd come in and just would just show up. Did you ever ask her to clean your room? No. All right, directing your attention to June the 12th. Yes. Can you tell us uh, who was in the house, June the 12th of 1994, can you tell us who was in the house on that date? On June 12th? Yes. Oh, just myself and uh, OJ. Was Gigi there? She was not there. How about Arnell? I didn't see Arnell. Okay. And Arnell, of course, we're referring to, did he talk to you or mention anything to you about Nicole during that conversation? Um, it was, they weren't together. How did that come up? It was conversation. I mean, I was reading a paper and it would come up about just Nicole, that their relationship was over. Do you recall how that happened to come up? How come you were talking about him and Nicole being through? I think it just came up um, about, uh, he was going to recital. I think it had to do with, um, um, Paula, because yeah, I think OJ just wanted to go to the recital on his own, and 
I think she wanted to go. I, and I think it just came up like that. Did Paula call at some point in that afternoon during that conversation? Gosh, I, I, I think so. I, I can't recollect it. I'm sure, I think so. Who do you mean when you talk about Paula? Who is that? Um, OJ's girlfriend. Paula Barbieri, is that? Yes. Did you have a conversation with the defendant about Paula Barbieri? That she, I think she wanted to go and that was it. That I think OJ just wanted to make it kind of a family thing, just to be on his own. Okay. Did he tell you that uh, Paula was upset because she wanted to go to the recital? Mm -hmm. Yes. She wanted to show Nicole that she was the defendant's girl? Mm -hmm. Sustained. No, is this what the defendant told you? Rephrase the question. I'm sorry, Ron. What did the defendant tell you that Paula said to him? I think she was upset that she wasn't going to go. Twelve twenty, right? Twelve twenty. Evidence code section. No, I know. Tell us what the nature of that conversation was. It was um, to get some. He had hundred dollar bills and he needed uh, like a five for the sky cap and he asked me if I had some cash. Okay. So after uh, he told you he only had hundred dollar bills and he needed a five dollar bill for the sky cap, what did you do? I uh, gave him 20. You gave him a 20, was it a $20 bill? Yes. And when you uh, gave him the $20 bill, did you put it in his hand? Yes. Could you see both his hands? One hand, for sure, but I, I could see both hands, yeah. Did you notice him bleeding or cut on either hand? No. And so, and what happened next? I, I gave him the money, and he said he was going to get hamburger, and I said, can I go? You invited yourself to go with him? Yes. And what was his response to that? Sure. You seem real excited to have you come? Objection. Sustained. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You and the defendant, when you walked out to McDonald's, did you walk behind him? When you walked out to go to the car to go to McDonald's, did you walk behind him? Mm, yes. And did you walk through the pool area behind him? Oh, oh, oh. The pool, the, we walked to the back door. Yes. And through the bar area. Okay, and yes. you were walking behind him, were you? Yes. And, did, and where did you walk then? To the kitchen nook, out the door to the car. And you were walking behind him the whole time? Yeah, pretty much so. I think he was leading. Did he walk funny? No. Was he limping? No. And when you got into the car, you went to, you indicated you went to a McDonald's on Santa Monica Boulevard? Yes. Is that the closest McDonald's to Rockingham? No. Which one is closer? There, there is one on, uh, I believe, Wilshire. On Wilshire? Yes. But you didn't go to that one? No. Who chose the, which McDonald's to go to? Who chose the place to go and eat? OJ. And you're sure you did not go to Burger King? Oh, yes. You went no. to McDonald's? McDonald's. Tug of war today with Brian Cato Kalen caught in the middle. Both sides, prosecutors and defense attorneys, pulling at Kalen, trying to get him to say what they wanted him to say about O.J. Simpson's demeanor, Simpson's, quote, degree of upsetness. Um, Nicole didn't let me see Sydney. I want to see my daughter. I want to see her. And, uh... Oh, boy. Kind of like, I want to see my daughter. And then uh, they're wearing these tight outfits that these, I don't know, Cato, I don't know how they can wear these tight outfits. They're just, uh, if they're going to be grandmas one day, I mean, can they wear those? Was that the can tone of voice? 
No, it was, it was sort of, they can't be wearing those tight outfits, uh, but it was a degree of upset. It's such a hard thing to, I, being upset, uh, it wasn't throwing things. It wasn't just wearing that mini skirt. But Marsha Clark read from previous testimony and tried to make it appear Kalen was contradicting himself. 